Hello, I'm Ruth Gowdy and I'm here at Kill Farm Nursery in our Christmas tree plantation talking about container grown Christmas trees. Lots of people love the idea of having a container grown Christmas tree because they don't want to have a Christmas tree that's cut down and thrown away after Christmas. So a container grown tree is a perfect solution. So the first thing to realise is that there are two types of container trees that you can buy at Christmas time. One's called a potted tree and one's called a container grown tree. The potted tree is when We've gone out into the field and Paul has dug up a tree with the roots and then put the roots into a pot freshly in November with some earth. So the chances of that surviving probably 50-50 because it's still got the roots but it may not take. If you're buying a container grown tree, it is a tree that has been grown in a pot. So it's never been out in the field here. It's been grown on a nursery and the roots are growing within that pot shape. So if you want to make sure that your tree survives, it's better to buy a container grown tree. It's a plant, a living plant. I have done another video all about different types of trees and it's called choosing your perfect Christmas tree. The thing to think about is how big you want your Christmas tree to be. Lots of people will automatically ask for a five or six foot container grown trees. Now Christmas trees have really deep tap roots, which is why when they get to five to six foot, we can't dig them up from the field. But it does mean that in a container, they're very, very compacted. And so you might want to consider having a smaller tree and allowing it to grow each year. If you're getting a five to six foot tree, I would recommend that after Christmas, it goes straight into the garden. It's not really something you can repot and bring back for very much longer successfully. Looking after your tree over Christmas is really important. When you bring your tree in, it's been outside and it can't take its coat off when it comes into your lovely warm house. So you need to think it's gonna have a bit of a shock and you'll need to look after it carefully. Just like a cut tree, we recommend that you don't put it near a heat source like a radiator or right by the fire because it's gonna dry out. However, it does have a far better chance of doing well than a cut tree because you're, you're gonna have it in a pot and you'll be able to water it effectively. After Christmas, the tree's gonna have just the same shot going back outside from having been in quite a warm environment. So whereas it's been treated like a house plant, now it's going back out into a hardy environment. And one of the biggest mistakes that people make is to just put it outside after Christmas and forget about it for a week or a couple of months even before they do anything with it. So bear in mind that January or February can sometimes be quite dry and very cold. So do look at your tree, make sure it's not drying out keep it wet and watered. As soon as you get the chance, either pot it up or put it in the garden. If you're thinking of repotting your Christmas tree, this is a perfect size tree to repot and grow every year. So you can see that the roots are really quite tight round in this pot. So I recommend you going up to a pot, anything up to this size. And you can repot with ericaceous compost and I'd give it a good feed with ericaceous feed. You probably want to do that after Christmas and each year. And then you top using bark chip or decorative bark. Um, the trees love the acid soil, so that will complement that. The other thing I'd recommend is if you're keeping your tree in a pot, if you have got space in your garden, you can sink the whole pot into the garden because the roots will be able to get nourishment from the earth around in the garden, but you will still be able to lift it out in the following year. And the tree won't be as exposed to the elements once it's in the ground, so it won't be so cold in the winter and subject to drought in the summer in the same way. Another alternative is to use a hessian sack or just wrap it in hessian instead of using a pot uh, if you are going to bury it in the ground. And um, 
Paul's grandfather used to do this for years and years, literally wrap the roots in the hessian, plant it in the ground and then lift it the following Christmas. When you plant your tree in the garden, it's probably going to be this size or maybe even this size, but we start our trees out at this size. Whatever size you're doing, you'll need the same method to plant it. That is to dig a big hole, bigger than the pot size, use ericaceous compost to line that hole, and also use some ericaceous feed. Your Christmas trees love acid soil, and so the ericaceous compost is just right for that. Once you've planted, you want to plant to the same level of your, uh, the top of your pot as the top of the ground and then you just mulch with the wood chip and that helps to keep the moisture in and also it supplements the ericaceous nature of the soil. When you plant your Christmas tree, don't plant it too deep. The soil level needs to be the same on the pot as it was in the ground. And if you've got any queries about that, if you look at my planting container grown tree video, you'll be able to check up and see me demonstrate that. A word of warning, once you have planted it in the garden, you won't really be able to dig it up and bring it in and take it back out again unless you've kept it in a pot. It's unlikely to survive that transplanting. So this is one of our Norman firs out in the field and Paul prunes these regularly to make sure that they do grow into the right shape and um, otherwise they turn into those these really wide trees um, and that's what you would need to do when you have it either in a pot or in the garden to make sure it grows properly, not too sparse here at the top, it encourages the bushy growth. So Paul is pruning to try to create that conical shape. He has to do all the Christmas trees in the field like this. So he's pruning the lateral shoot out from between the V of two other shoots. The tree will continue to grow and just become more bushy. If your tree gets to a certain height and you want to stop it, if you prune your leader, it, you'll ruin the shape of the tree. It, that will be the shape of the tree forever and it will actually grow outwards this way instead of growing up. If you want to keep it shorter, you don't want to prune here because ultimately it will just look like a bowl instead of a conical sh cone shape and that won't recover from that. In fact, we have pigeons who come and sit on the top of the tree and will peck the leader out and, and then sometimes it will grow two, three or even four leaders at the top. So the top tip for making sure that your Christmas tree survives, believe it or not, is to think about it in the summer. So whether it's in a pot or a, the ground, the tree will be thirsty. And especially that first year, it won't necessarily have got the roots down into the ground sufficiently in order to absorb enough moisture to survive. So when you're watering your pots out in your garden in the summer, make sure you water your Christmas tree just as much. We find that we have phone calls and emails in August and that's the time when people lose their Christmas trees. They say the needles have gone brown and the tree is bare and that's simply that they haven't been watering over this summer. So that's the one thing to really think about to make sure that your tree survives. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you need help with choosing your Christmas tree, the variety, we also have a video about that that you can watch. Uh, but most of all, this is the best way for you to be able to have a tree that you don't throw away after Christmas and you're doing your bit for the environment.